Today is February 23rd, 2025. Don't forget to send a message on my email cafthompson at gmail.com and also my link https double dot double bar Carlos Thompson PhD dot com dot br. Okay, let's continue the motivation in which it will derive will be derived all 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 the, the steps. You see refining steps about the Einstein field equations. That uh, very very important. And this is uh, uh, this here, okay? Just to remind you, this is my G mu nu. This is Einstein tensor, okay? That's defined this way, related to curvature. This is cos cosmological constant, and G mu nu is the metric, covariant metric, okay? And T mu nu, as I said before, is the energy momentum stress tensor. Here, here is the definition of the rich scalar. You call capital R, is R mu nu, G mu nu, attention, G mu nu here is the contravariant, contravariant metric tensor, okay? G mu nu is the covariant metric tensor. Now, they, they call, the literature call this scalar, they don't put the word tensor, okay? Because in general they call, this, they, don't, they don't set, they don't put the word tensor when I have a scalar. Yeah? Remember that a scalar is a zero order tensor. Okay? That's a very important. The scalar is also a tensor, okay? but the order is zero. This is a second order component of a tensor. This is called rich tensor. Look, Jamie Nu is a contravariant metric tensor. G mu nu is the covariant metric tensor. Okay. This I emphasize on the last two videos. This the left hand side measures the curvature of the space time. The right hand side is the matter energy content. Okay. T mu nu covariant is the Energy momentum stress tensor. Okay, in your new. This is related to the matter, this is related to the curvature. And never forget that the left hand side is geometry of the space time. The right hand side, in this case, is the matter energy content. This matter movement, geometry content. Then I'll do like this. I'll put equal over here, okay? So, as I said before, okay, uh, space-time tells matter to move. On the other hand, the, the matter tells the space-time to curve, okay? That's why we have here an equal sign. Now, this is the, the figure that I showed last time. Here I put all the coordinates, okay? The, this is a dimension, the four dimension in space time. Your x, x zero is ct. C is the light velocity, t is the time. You see, x zero, it has the length, it has the dimension of length, okay? Likewise, xi. Xi is a spatial coordinate, and X0 is a time coordinate. Very, very important. 
Okay? And here's the, the figure that I show, I showed, it was shown last, last time. There's a matter, there's a curvature. Okay? Now, what is important, we are going to work, develop the, in the time-like trajectory hypothesis. This is, the time is dominant. Once the time is dominant, you see, Fox of this x1 coordinate is spatial, and this is the time. This is a line, 45 degrees, okay? And this, this line here, x0 is equal x1, or ct is equal z, x0. That's the line. We are going over, working in this region over here, okay? This region over here. Why? This read over here, you see, the time is dominant. Time is dominant. That's uh, why we call time-like trajectory. So it's quite clear, okay? I'll, I'll come back on this side of the, of the board. Now, this is uh, analogous to the classical mechanics, to the position vector. Okay? There is no position vector when we talk about uh, intrinsic geometry. Okay? But I can't write like that. Okay, this is a summation. We're going to see it in the next video. Quite clear. That's the sun. Okay? When I, I set I, Arabic indices, okay, then I, I'm telling you that i is equal 1, 2, 3. The i is equal 1, 2, 3. And 0 refers to the time. Okay? There's a sum that's analogous to the position vector. ds, dx mu, and mu. You're going to see this next video, okay? the summation over here. These are called dummy index. I'm going to say that. Where, by definition, the dot product is 0, is 0, is minus 1, because it is time dominant. And EI, EJ, is the current delta, delta IJ. Again, you're going to see all these in detail. Okay? Don't be scared. Now, DS square, okay? This is the same. I will write over here for, to be more clear. Okay, this is right. This is the same as this. The S, the S. This we call uh, internal product. Okay is analogous to the dot product in classical mechanics. So ds square is ds, I'll write right here like this. See, using the symbol here means a internal product. This is a minus, attention here, Time is dominant, minus dx0 square plus dxi dxi, where i is equal 1, 2, 3. Spatial, spatial coordinate. Zero is time coordinate. Now, this example that I gave to you, I just show, I'm showing just for a particular case of x1 and x0. This is a straight line, okay? This, this straight line can be written as x0 is equal x1. Here, no time, no spatial dominant because x0 is related to the time ct. C is the light velocity, attention, light velocity times time 
is land. That's why all this coordinate here refer to land. Now, you're going to see later in other videos, this is a, this is a metric and the special relativity. Okay? It's called Minkowitz metric. Exactly, this is a internal derivative analogous to dot product is minus one in the diagonal is minus one plus one plus one plus one. This is why in general we call the time like trajectory to just set like that. Minus plus plus plus. This means that the time is dominant. Why the time is dominant? You see here, points in this region, the, the coordinate x0 is always greater than x1. That's why we call the dominant is the coordinate at the time coordinate. Okay. So, this is a, a reinforced, okay, what uh, we talked in the last two videos. That's my, my third message to you. Now, you see the importance of the metric. Here, metric, metric. Here is the metric, okay? Uh, I will spend some time uh, uh, recording some videos and the uh, properties properties 